This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aperoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aperoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. I don't know about you, but I really love it when people say thank you. I like saying thank you. And this week, a company said thank you to all of its Kiwi customers. I'm talking about Chinese firm BYD, which sent an email to all of its customers in Aotearoa, thanking them for their bravery in buying a BYD EV in the last 12 months. The brand has just celebrated its first year in both Australia and New Zealand, and said that it's now sold 12,000 Atto 3 SUVs in both markets. It operates the country's first manufacturer-backed panel network, which operates 14 body and panel shops, has expanded the number of BYD showrooms from 4 to 12, and says that many, many Atto 3 vehicles were pushed into service earlier this year following severe flooding, taking use of the car's built-in V to L functionality to keep people safe and powered up. So, happy birthday, BYD, NZ. Ford confirmed this week that while overall vehicle sales were up year on year in July by 10.3%, EV sales for July were significantly lower. According to official figures from the brand, Mustang Mark E sales were down 21% year on year in July, F-150 Lightning sales were down 29% year on year, and Ford E Transit sales were up 50% year on year. Big price hikes and a six-week shutdown at the Rouge production facility are to blame for the F-150 Lightning's drop in sales, but with newly lowered pricing and the Rouge now promising capacity of 150,000 trucks a year, Ford appears hopeful sales will increase. That said, it now lowered its predictions and says it will hit 600,000 EVs a year sometime early next year, not by the end of this year, as it had previously promised. The US federal government has been handing out federal funds this week to various companies eager to expand fueling infrastructure for big rigs. The first recipient is Watt EV, which has received 340.5 million US dollars to establish a US West Coast EV truck charging corridor along I-5 between Mexico and Canada. At the same time, Nikola Motor confirmed that its Hyla hydrogen fuel station brand has received $16.3 million in federal funding to build seven open network hydrogen refueling stations along California freight corridors. At the same time, we learned this week Tesla has applied for 100 million US dollars in funding to establish nine charging sites between California and Texas with eight mega chargers and four EV charging stations for non-Tesla big rigs at each. Troubled electric vehicle company Lordstown Motors, which we recently reported has run out of money and is in the process of trying to apply for bankruptcy, has hit yet another roadblock. As Reuters reported this week, a bankruptcy judge in the state of Delaware has refused attempts by the company to expedite bankruptcy bidding procedures because of a pre-existing court case that's ongoing in California. In that case, Lordstown is accused of stealing ideas and employees from Karma Automotive. With no verdict in that case yet, the bankruptcy judge quite rightly questioned exactly what IP and assets Lordstown will be capable of selling as part of its bankruptcy, and which ones, if any, are actually owned by Karma Automotive. Things just keep getting worse for Lordstown, it seems. The Kia EV9, while now being delivered in its home market of South Korea, isn't yet officially being delivered in the US or in Canada, but demand is already outstripping supply. This week, Kia Canada officially opened the order books for the EV9, with a total of 527 examples allocated to sell for the 2024 model year. 
Demand was so high, in fact, that the reservation site crashed by Monday afternoon, and Kia made the announcement shortly thereafter that the unexpected demand meant it was pausing reservations to ensure all the ones it had received thus far had been properly processed. Kia is expected to open the order books in the US later this year, but like Canada, expect availability to remain low until it opens its new EV9 production line in Georgia, US next year. I'm sure we all know by now that the usability of electric vehicles outside of major cities is determined by how reliable and comprehensive public fast charging infrastructure really is. That's now been reiterated by a new survey from JD Power, which highlights the disparity in EV fast charging infrastructure across the US. Examining charging provision in every state, it points out that while the average distance between fast charging stations in much of California is just 10 miles or 16 kilometers. There's an average of 465 miles, 748 kilometers between charging stations in Nebraska, far further than most EVs can realistically travel between charges. While this survey certainly provides a needed talking point, I do question its methodology as I've driven EVs across both California and Nebraska without too many issues in either case. The eGMP platform that underpins the Hyundai Ioniq 5, Ioniq 6, Kia EV6 and Genesis GV60, among others, is, we think, one of the most capable and exciting electric car platforms yet. This week, we got very good news for both Hyundai and Kia on demand for their respective vehicles built on the same, with both recording new sales highs for their respective vehicles. Kia reported sales of 1,937 EV6s during July, which is up 13% year on year, while Hyundai recorded 4,135 Ioniq 5 sales, a 109% year on year increase as well as 1,745 Ionic 6 sales, the first time that more than 1,000 Ionic 6 have been sold in a single month since its launch. It's still not high EV sales volume, but it is heading in the right direction. A new survey of 5,000 Tesla Model 3 owners on their views of Tesla, Elon Musk and more by Bloomberg shows that while some owners are upset with Elon Musk's behaviour of late, others are looking to Tesla for their next car. While a significant portion of early adopters to the brand report frustration with Elon Musk's recent behaviour on social media, most still love the car, and of those questioned, almost 75% say they are considering a Tesla as their next vehicle. Of those who are looking at another Tesla, 54% say that they want the Tesla Cybertruck to be their next purchase, followed by a Tesla Model Y at 23.6%. Those looking to dump Tesla are very much in the minority. One of the big considerations for anyone buying a new vehicle is the warranty period being offered by the automaker in question. And these days, EV warranties are generally pretty good. But this week we learned that Rivian will be offering a slightly different warranty for its dual motor models compared to its quad motor models. As confirmed this week, while quad motor R1T and R1S vehicles come with an 8-year, 175,000-mile battery and drivetrain warranty, far more than the minimum federal mandated warranty period, dual motor R1T and R1S models will have that warranty reduced to 150,000 miles and 8 years. In a similar way, the bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty drops from 60,000 miles for quad models to 50,000 miles for dual models. For any company, getting a government contract is a big deal, be it for development of a new secure software system or supplying something as basic as loo paper. And this week, eVTOL aircraft specialist Archer Aviation announced that it secured a $142 million contract from the US Air Force, the largest military contract to date for electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Archer Aviation has been working alongside the Department of Defense for more than two years now as part of the Air Force's AF Works program and says the new contract, which includes delivery of six midnight eVTOL aircraft, each with a payload of up to 1,000 pounds, will focus on utilizing the aircraft as alternatives to traditional single-blade helicopters in the military. 
Before we get to our last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are, and you are in Altera, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can use, and of course, how to get charging at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. We regularly see a large number of startups in this industry announce new products that sound too good to be true. And very often those promises are accompanied by lots of computer generated imagery and sometimes animation. And to date, California based Alpha Motor Corporation has used CGI to drum up interest in its promised range of electric vehicles. In fact, for two years or more, we've seen nothing but renderings from the company. That's led us and many others to question the company's future prospects. This week, however, it surprised everyone by releasing a video of what it says is a working engineering prototype for its Alpha Wolf two seat light duty pickup. Presented in the form of a commercial with questions fashionable acting, the company showed the Alpha Wolf prototype driving off-road, and while it is good to see it in motion, something about this video still doesn't feel quite right. But I can't put my finger on it. Let me know if you can. And finally, these days it is almost impossible to buy a brand new electric vehicle that doesn't have some form of subscription service attached to it. And some cars actually lock out functionality unless you pay a subscription fee or an unlock fee to use it. A prerequisite for such systems is an inordinate amount of computer processing power within the vehicle. And at this week's coming Black Hat USA 2023 conference, a team of PhD security researchers from TU Berlin will present a session detailing how they were able to use fairly standard hacking techniques to gain access to the computer systems within a Tesla. They successfully tapped into the car's onboard computer system using a known security exploit to gain access to the car's various systems. They were able to run unauthorized code on the infotainment system, and they were also able to unlock various features that usually require a subscription service. We'll know more about this after the presentation. But I think it's a good reminder that if you or someone else has physical access to something and it's a computer, you can usually work out a way to hack it as well. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure that you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to Ataro's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He's been testing out an electric scooter worth $1,400 that you can win for completely nothing by entering our prize draw. Go on, check out the link below and enter today. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.